Hey there YouTube, so in this video I wanted to cover capital loss transactions and their deductibility on your individual income tax return, your Form 1040, uh, but specifically I wanted to focus in on the $3,000 capital loss deduction limitation that is used to offset um, your ordinary income with capital losses. Okay, so generally you can't deduct, um, you can't use capital losses to offset ordinary income, but there is a unique exception for this $3,000 limitation. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Um, if we start at the top there, just some background. Uh, Section 61 of the IRC states that taxpayers need to report gross income from whatever source derived. And this includes income earned from the sale of property even at a loss, okay? Now, when you think about it, if you sell something for a loss, you're still getting some type of proceeds, right? Those are the gross proceeds from the sale. That is income. And so that is reported on your tax return. Now, obviously, you want to report your cost basis because if you bought something high and you sold it low for a loss, um, you want to be able to claim the losses, okay? So if we look at an example here, we have John. He's buying his shares of Apple stock. 132 a share, sells it for 120, so he's got a loss, 12 bucks per share. Um, so he has gross proceeds from the sale, right? He did sell it for something, 120 times five shares, he got $600 back, but when he bought it, he paid 660, so his net capital loss is $60 on the total transaction. Now, if we move into the $3,000 uh, capital loss limitation, you can find that in section 1211B of the Internal Revenue Code. So 1211B says that non-corporate taxpayers, so these are individuals, can deduct the lower of $3,000 or the excess of the losses over the gains. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's look at some examples here and that'll help uh, kind of highlight the, the, the distinction here. So we have Adam, he buys 50K where the Tesla stock sells it for 48.5, right? So he had a $1,500 short-term capital loss. He has no other capital gains or loss transactions for the year. This was the only one. Well, this is his only one. He has a capital loss of 1500 Under 1211B, he can deduct this $1,500 capital loss against his ordinary income, okay? Because it falls underneath the $3,000 threshold. Let's look at an example where it's gonna be capped. So we have Jack buys 35K where the Google stock sells it five weeks later for 30 so he has a five thousand dollar short-term capital loss he has no other capital gains or loss transactions for the year the capital loss of five thousand can only be deducted against ordinary income to the extent of 3k right that's the 1211b limitation now the excess two thousand isn't lost forever right it's a capital loss carry forward which can be rolled for in future tax years where he can use it to offset future capital gains or again, he can rely on this 1211B limitation. Maybe if he has no capital gains or losses in the next year, he can take the 2000 and it's ordinary under uh, 1211B. So what do taxpayers need to do with their Form 1040s to report all this? Well, um, there's three, three basically required elements, right? They definitely need the 8949. Um, 8949 is being used to report individual sale transactions, right? And then the totals from all the pages of the 8949 are gonna to flow to Schedule D. So Schedule D is the capital gains and losses schedule that goes with your Form 1040. Um, this is kind of the consolidated capital gains and losses schedule that goes with your return. So it's gonna have all the amounts flowing from Form 8949, as well as uh, pass-through capital gains and losses. So if you get a K-1 from a partnership or K-1 from an S-Corp, You'll see um, that there are line items for capital gains or losses, short and long term. Those amounts will flow through to Schedule D as well. Uh, Schedule D also reports gains from straddle contracts, 1256 futures contracts. And then if you have a 49, uh, sorry, 4797 included for the sale of a property being used in a trader business that has capital gain, um, you'll have that included as well. So once Schedule D is completed, all of those amounts are ultimately going to flow through to Form 1040. Um, and then it's either subject to tax or if you have a position like Jack here where you just have $3,000 in capital loss that's going to offset ordinary income, 
he'll have a three thousand uh, dollar deduction on his form 1040 which is going to be used to offset his ordinary earnings so uh, that covers it i hope uh, that was helpful if you have any questions leave me a comment below and i look forward to seeing you again on the next video thank you